Good afternoon, everyone. It's Friday, April 30th, uh, 1.51 p.m. This is Senate Education. Uh, we uh, are going to be returning to the floor at 4. Um, we certainly, uh, I don't plan on having us here that long. Uh, there are really two, two areas of focus. Uh, H106, continuing our work on. Uh, as well as uh, S16. I know that we also have H449 on our calendar. Um, and uh, that's something if senators are interested in, we will return to uh, after we finish our uh, immediate work. That bill again is in government operations and we will, um, uh, but we'll continue our walkthrough if Ms. Wasserman has some time after uh, they, she finishes her work there. Uh, again, it's not in our possession. And then H101, I have scheduled uh, a vote for, but I think I'm going to punt that until next week, just in case we need it for any other um, uh, bills that might um, come back uh, to us or anything else we want to add. So with that, let's focus uh, H106, community schools bill, uh, just to give everybody uh, uh, an update on H106. Um, I had a meeting this morning with the pro tem um, and others uh, about this bill. Um, we're hearing today from uh, uh, Ms. Finn and we have Deputy Secretary Boucher back with us. Uh, I think Senator Perchlick also may have somebody that might come in next week, uh, or at least he may touch base with a uh, constituent on this bill. But we're looking at probably a, a Wednesday vote on this, um, given that uh, we've been on the floor quite a bit. We haven't really had the time to uh, uh, continue our work on it. So that's the plan. <clears throat> so we'll hear from, uh, from uh, again, Ms. Finn today, uh, as well as, um, Deputy Secretary, continue to make edits. We do have Senator Pearson coming in on Tuesday on this bill. One of the reasons I met with the pro tem, Senators Pearson and uh, Starr this morning was, Senators may recall uh, from yesterday's vote on S100, uh, during my floor comments, it um, I mentioned how uh, there was not yet agreement on uh, creating markets incentivizing schools to buy local foods, creating food markets, uh, all of that language that we had hoped would travel with S100. And we had been told that it would travel with S100. Uh, so uh, the Agriculture Committee, Senator Pearson in particular, is really pushing for that uh, language. I certainly think I, for one, would like to see that language go through as well. Um, in talking with a little bit with the Chair of Approps and others, seems like S1, H106 would be a good spot to put that, uh, given also that we have in that bill now um, a study on uh, getting us to universal school meals. So I asked Senator uh, Pearson to come in on Tuesday, introduce that idea to the committee, take us through his thoughts, let us know some of the uh, other people that he's spoken to and, um, and the committee's heard from, and we'll go from there. Um, and then Jim, uh, H101, I did mention that uh, we're going to punt that until next week um, because we may need it as a vehicle for other work. And so the one thing I'm going to ask you to do, if you don't mind, is uh, can you do a title change to that? Right now it is there, the House's uh, literacy bill, um, and it, it has language in there, mostly around the State Board of Education. It's our diversity, and it's also some of the agreements that we, uh, Secretary French and John Carroll, have agreed to. Can you change that name to for us? Um, just make it a more of a State Board. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I did change the, the name already in the, in the draft. Oh, great! Yeah. Terrific. Terrific. I did not see that on the agenda, so I thought that maybe it was the same. So the very, end, very end of the uh, of the amendment. Great. Okay. Terrific. So uh, I appreciate that. We'll take a look. And do you want me to update one hundred and six uh, for Tuesday with that um, promise? No, I think uh, you know. I want to be respectful to the committee. Uh, 
of course, in, in the process. So I, I want the committee to hear from Senator Pearson first, and then we'll, we'll kind of see it where, where everybody uh, falls. Uh, I, I, for one, am enthusiastic about getting that going. I think I do agree with people that 106 might be a good spot, but I'll, I'll leave that to the committee. I don't think there's anything to, to update. The only thing I would ask if you do, you do have time, uh, if you wouldn't mind updating a little bit the, um, if it makes sense at all, and I'll look at it this weekend, is there any language that we should put in 106 that again, ties food, ties nutrition, ties getting to universal school meals, connects it at all to the underlying 106 bill? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question, but if you could just take a look at it, okay, and yeah. see if there's anything there. Questions at this point, comments. Okay, uh, Ms. Finn, thank you for being with us. Thank you for your patience. Uh, you know, you just heard that, uh, and as you and I have spoken, we are in uh, the final lap uh, or close to it of the session. You did send us a lot of suggested changes. Um, uh, and I think perhaps the best way to do this is for us to take about 15 or 20 minutes and have you take us through some of these changes um, and, uh, and, and maybe even prioritize them in a way. Uh, it may be that the committee is comfortable with all of them, but um, let's start with a, a little bit of a walkthrough, if you would. Sure. Um, can you, um, can everybody see the rec the recommendations? They were emailed to us. Yeah, so, so if I'm looking, I'm looking at them, I can just point out where we are, where, where I am in them? Yeah, we have okay. a, a date April 22nd, 2021. Yes. Yeah. And um, we made adjustments based on the, I, we hope the most recent, uh, Draft 3.1. Uh, I have it right here. 3.1, yes. Okay, wonderful. And um, I'm seeing things in yellow and red. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, and can I give just a little bit of background before yes, I go into that? Okay, thank you. Um, we, we, um, so uh, for the record, my name is Carlin Finn. I'm the policy, a senior policy associate with Voices for Vermont's Children. And I'm, um, I'm here on behalf, of, and I think Deborah Lisi Baker testified to this on Wednesday on behalf of the Vermont Education Equity Project, the members who, who have all contributed to these suggestions. And um, we, uh, I th thank you for the opportunity to, to you know, share these with you. We see the community schools approach as, a, as really an umbrella um, that makes connections across disparate implementation efforts of education policies and as a model for transformative change in our schools. And so, you know, we think about these um, existing state policies and some, um, some bills, and I know one of the bills is you're going to be looking at um, come back from the House S16, but we have these um, great state policies such as Act 77, um, Act 264, which is, is, is an old uh, law, but I think is still uh, relevant. It's about supporting coordination of services between education Public Education and Human Services, and of course, Act One focused on educational equity and social justice. And this parallels with local and um, regional equity work. So this community school framework can really be a catalyst for building partnerships to address significant needs and challenges, which the bill really digs into, and be steeped in equity and a commitment to systems change. Um, necessary to, 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 to address deeply rooted inequities. And so there's the, there are four themes um, that we just wanted to point out because when we go through it, so it's a, such a you know, specific language, but what we're trying to address are um, the education equity and really 
finding a way um, through language to 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 make sure that equity is um, is front and center in this legislation. And um, uh, Senator Campion, I think you might, I was copied on an email to you from um, uh, John Castle, uh, one of the members who, who participated in this. Uh, uh, he's a superintendent up from North Country Supervisory Union. And he talks about the importance of this as a, a, a framework or an approach to the community schools and not a program. Um, and his, he, the way that he frames it is, is really that the committee define community schools as, as a framework so that it can remain a dynamic and um, organic process and avoid that kind of uh, that checklist, that program checklist. Did we do this, this, and this? Um, the third theme is um, the focus on community schools as a responsive strategy, um, kind of similar to that, but it's building on resources, assets, as well as, as addressing some of the um, significant um, needs and concerns that we have. And so it's kind of wanted to, the language that we've offered is steeped in that. And then we're offering um, an additional pillar um, that is, would incorporate actually pieces of what you have um, put into the legislation. It would incorporate things like um, PBI, PBIS, um, and uh, forgive me, I can never remember what that stands for, but you know, in, in the in restorative practices and restorative approaches. And um, it also would include curriculum, um, and the work of, you know, the work of the focus of Act One and really seeing um, inclusive and safe environments for, for students. So that's, that's the big framework. And uh, now I can go through and, and, you know, kind of bring back to, the, um, to that framework, these different additions that are recommendations. Okay, so on page one, section two, the findings section, um, we, you know, the, the reason that we, we um, spent time on the findings is that uh, it, it seems, it, I think we feel that it should be it, um, really expressing the intent of the bill um, and have really guide the purposes and actions. So that is why we, we spent time on the language around the, um, um, in the findings, excuse me. So the first, the, you know, the finding is, is that um, we're suggesting starting with, so adding um, every child should be provided an equitable education. And fortunately we have a definition of that from the uh, Agency of Education. Um, and, and you know, there are, there are the, a the AOE and others have done some real, really important work on, on defining and thinking about what, what that means, education equity or equitable education. And here it's as um, defined as access to the resources, opportunities and educational rigor they need, this is for uh, students of you, at the right moment in their education, whatever their race, gender, identity, sexual orientation. So you, you can see that this um, leading with this uh, um, is important. Um, if, if this bill can reflect, it should reflect that it's, it's going to focus on education equity or an equ equitable education. So if let's pause on this, you may, so at the right moment, uh, so this is more aspirational, correct? I mean, you know, I mean, I just don't want people uh, provide an equitable education as to, 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 at the right moment in their education. Um, it, it just, I, I worried, and actually we have Deputy Secretary Boucher here, uh, if we might have a conversation about these, because we were hoping you would weigh in in general. Would you mind uh, commenting on that? 
Yes, uh, certainly, uh, Mr. Chair. For the record, Heather Boucher, Deputy Secretary for Education. Uh, it's not, it's, whether it's aspirational or not, it is the definition of educational equity. Uh, Ms. Finn is completely correct. So this is the uh, definition that the state agency uses when um, making decisions uh, pertaining to um, programs that that we support, um, and it's certainly the definition uh, that we hold uh, districts and schools to. So it, we appreciate you're com you're, you're the coherence, actually. Hmm? So you're so you're good with us adding that. You're so yes, we appreciate okay. the the okay. um, improvement in terms co of coherence. Very helpful, Senator Perslick. Thank you. I just wondered about the bolded language. Is that part of the definition, or was that added because this is adapted from the the, the whole? From the my understanding is, and I don't have it right in front of me, but I've seen, um, I've reviewed the written testimony that. Ms. Finn um, put forth is the, uh, my understanding is the entire bolded section is the agency of education's language. And Ms. Finn can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it is. So yes, that is the definition that we use. Only the delineations of the children are like race, gender, all those are, the, are bolded. So I just wondered if that was added because if we delineate all the different groups, when we say every child, and then we say, here are all the delineations, if we happen to have missed one, does that mean they're not included? And so on the second finding, we say every child, but we don't list out all the groups. So it- My understanding is that we, them. sorry, Senator Perch, like I have a habit of pretending that we're in person and I'm French Canadian. And so from a big family. And so I interrupt a lot and I apologize for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> as I think Mr. Chair knows, because I've done it before in this committee and I apologize. Um, my understanding is that our language is not exclusive of those um, and that's not something that we would be supportive of. So I'd want to, I guess, then check that language. It, I think it might say including, but including the categories of. Um, and it's a pretty comprehensive list. So it, yes, there can always be another um, categorization, certainly. But I think we um, went really, really broad in terms of the agency's um, categorizations. I, it's just a thought, I guess, in that if, if we say every child, it would include everybody. So we're not disincluding anybody there. Um, then when you do we have to, or should we list as them out every time we talk about every child. So like in the second finding, we say every child, but we don't say whatever their race, gender, and everything else. So that's that's my only, just it's just a question for thought. I'm not opposed yeah, to- it's, Yeah, it's a great question. Yeah. Senator, or uh, Deputy Secretary Boucher. Sure, so um, this is something that we do a lot in, in education. So of course we want the best outcomes for all students, but we, we're calling out this equity piece because we wanna make sure that students who fall into at least these categories have special attention given their marginally underserved um, status. So we don't actually see those as um, mutually exclusive. And we don't, you know, we, we think that we think it's okay to have both. And we don't think that saying all excludes, certainly doesn't exclude historically under underserved youth. And we don't think when we say, when we, when we wanna actually um, speak about some of the particular challenges and barriers that historically marginalized youth uh, experience that it somehow, um, you know, diminishes a focus on on all students. We think that there's room at the table for both of those perspectives. Senator Hooker. And, and I think that, you know, we're referring to this list or similar lists in a lot of the uh, legislation that we've been doing this year. And it is a focus. And also I think that where it says whatever their race, color, and I think that makes it more inclusive. Right. Senator Persley, did you want to follow up? 
No, that's fine. I mean, I, I agree with the goal if we're trying to yeah. highlight that those that are have, have been suffering from inequitable education. But the way the, the way I read the list, it was just trying to it's it, yeah, I'm fine with it. It's fine, you know, it, I, I agree with the goal and so it and it's it's a finding, so it it's fine. Okay, so uh Unless I see an objection, why don't uh, we have Mr. Demaray there with us? <clears throat> uh, Mr. Demaray, if you would uh, plan on including that language, uh, we'd appreciate it. Great, thank you. Ms. Finn, section two. Sure, um, we added um, our public schools. So this is um, just to, <clears throat> what we were thinking about is that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that, our, our schools, when we're, talk, when we're talking about community schools and we're really talking about building and rebuilding around the community school model, that we recognize that they're, number one, that it's a dynamic process, of, they're being designed, but they, they um, also need, um, excuse me, the resources. And so that's equipped, but resources to deliver on the promise, and that, which is in that the line before. And I, I just, uh, we just wanted to, again, um, it may feel a little bit like we're 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 just um, adding language for for its own sake, but it 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 is to like acknowledge that um, the schools need the resources and. Um, and they need the time to, to, to design or redesign. You know, that's, so that's what that language is about. Okay. Questions there? We won't vote on every single one. I would like to get through them all just so uh, we, in the next 20 minutes or so. So why don't we keep going? If you wanna just give us the, I'd say the highlights of each one. So for number three, um, that's language that adds really the assets of people, helps to elevate the importance of the community school approach and in uh, assets language and still acknowledging the challenges and the needs. But, um, you know, the, the beauty of the community schools is that it, it's, it's really, um, it, the, the, the focus is on bringing in the unique assets of of both the communities, but pe the people, the students. And uh, so, so we're suggesting um, kind of reframing the findings um, to focus on assets um, at, while at the same time, you know, acknowledging that there are plenty of challenges that, sure. that we're dealing with. Okay, number four. So number four is the introduction uh, to the a uh, concept of a new pillar, an additional pillar, which uh, it says supports the necessity of safe, inclusive, and equitable learning environments. Um, and that, that is like the, the way to, for us to be introducing that as a pillar in the, in, the, um, in the bill itself. Dr. Boucher, do you see any objections, any concerns with that fourth pillar? No, okay. And I'll just wait for senators to raise hands for questions or concerns. Uh, okay, number five. Number five, um, let's see. Um, this is a, a change um, again to focus on. Uh, one of the folks raised the issue of, of uh, instead of focusing on the gaps, um, it, you know, is to is to focus on the systems issues that get to those like to achievement gaps, um, and that's reducing the systemic racial and economic injustices and inequities. Is, is how we framed that. So it's it's kind of, it's just a you know it's a, it's another way of acknowledging that there are achievement gaps and other challenges, but it's you know saying we're committed. Um, in this work to, to getting at the root of those, um, of those challenges. Okay, great. I'm looking at number seven, uh, additional findings on page three. So do uh, you wanna say something about those? So this is again adding um, a, you know, kind of a, a focus on um, the essence of community schools. 
And, and we're thinking, um, and that this gets tricky, but we're thinking that this could also help um, you know, highlight, uh, think about informing the eligibility and evaluation methods. Um, so it, it's describing community schools in a way where um, I'm not sure exactly how to do this. I'm definitely not an evaluator, um, but uh, as just a way to start thinking about how, how the AOE is going to determine who is eligible. And so this just put that in the findings as a, as a, as a, a step toward that, perhaps. And as we're going through this, Mr. Demaray, if you see anything, a lot of this, it's a lot of, it's great, you know, in general, I'm, I'm feeling very supportive of it. It's it just as long as we're not overlapping with anything that's already in the bill or just, uh, you know, <clears throat> that's just something I think for our ledge council to keep an eye on it. And certainly Dr. Boucher, as we go through this, any, any concerns? Okay, uh, turning to uh, the purpose. So this is the um, this is where um, we're suggesting taking out the word program. It's essentially, you know, keeping taking out the word program and just identifying this as a implementation implementation of community schools. Uh, and um, does that? Tell me a little bit more, if you wouldn't mind. Why is, why, tell me the, uh, the problem with programs. Um, let's see how, um, this is, this is what John Castle, what John Castle said. He said that we, and he's talking about the education, you know, in, in schools or education in, in general, um, we've drifted away from seeing um, the interconnectedness of our work. Um, and he was specifically talking about the four pillars because he, he outlines why they're so important, the, the ones that are named right now. Um, and that, that, that should be emphasized as an approach around community schools. Um, and he, he's saying, to, you know, encourages us, encourages you not to define community schools as a program because that it, it makes it much more static and that, that um, you know, tendency to, to think about it as, okay, this is, here's a program and here's our checklist mindset. Okay, so we've done A, B, and C, and it, it, it's not as dynamic as just naming, you know, the community schools approach, just community schools and thinking about it as, a, as an approach to, to this work. I'm personally fine with keeping programs in. I think it, it, to me, it makes, you know, there are programs that are gonna come from community schools and these programs are going to, um, you know, uh, are, are sort of, you will, part of that wraparound service. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I can, I can go either way, but um, I see Senator Hooker's gonna, I'm just wondering, as Ms. Finn said, that um, framing it as more of a system and, as opposed to a program, program sort of has a finite or, or a- Just so you know, they, there is a mistake in the testimony. It's actually programs. So it's not program in the, I mean, and there is a, diff, there is a difference there. I mean, yeah. programs that are gonna be instituted compared to this, the community school program um, so, uh, just know that. Mm. I'm well, I, I think the broader aspect yep. of it, the more all encompassing piece is, uh, what sets it apart from other programs that are implemented at schools, but that's, I mean, it, it may be just semantics and yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm going to stick with programs unless I see a lot of objections right now, uh, and then we can always come back to it if, if you don't mind. If, if, how about this, Senator Hooker? Let's I'll flag it as something that we return to um, and have a discussion on. That's the one area, and then there's also the second piece of that, Ms. Finn, 
uh, remove education? Um, let's see. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Um, that was also a, uh, a suggestion from an educator that, um, that to define education more broadly as learning opportunities. Yeah. Um, and then making sure that we include the necessary supports um, in there. Um, so, so that is, uh, yeah, that, those are educators' um, suggestions. To remove the word education. And to put instead high quality learning opportunities and necessary supports. Uh. of community school programs that provide students with equitable access to high quality learning opportunities and um, necessary supports that create a task force on universals. And then why do you have universal school lunch there? Because that's where it was that where the, the new, um, uh, yeah. That, uh, there, yeah. I see it now, I see it now, thank you. Uh, Um, okay, uh, I mean, I, I'm okay with it. Uh, that's, yeah. So let's see. Again, I'm sorry. I think it, it brings it beyond the walls of the school. Yeah. When you say learning opportunities, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're talking about that intersection with community, with families. So you can learn in many different situations. So when we think of education in this context, you know, in the context of a school, there, I think, has a different meaning. So maybe the learning opportunities sort of opens it up more. Yeah, I feel like it. I feel like it does. Senator Perchlick? Um, I don't know if there's a real definition between the two uh, delineation between the two words, but in the you know in the findings we talk about an equitable education, not equitable learning opportunities. So I don't know, I don't know if it matters. So I go either way. I don't care really, <laughs> but I just wondered if if, if there is a definitional difference, should we keep education because we're talking about that in findings? Uh, Mr. Demaray, uh, do we keep uh, education or do we, we, any thoughts? Well, the only thought is whatever you do, it should be consistent. Okay. I'm not sure, I, I'm looking, I'm not sure many of these are making huge, big changes in the bill itself, I'll be honest. I mean, I, it's, these are language, you know, I don't see the bill passed with some of these without them. I, I'm, I'm thinking they're maybe a little bit more holistic, a little bit more, uh, you know, some added language. I, I, I'll be honest, uh, Ms. Finn, I don't see this as, these as huge game changers, if you will, uh, overall. Um, let's, let's, again, I'll flag this, but let's keep it education for now, and we'll keep uh, programs in for now. And... Um, and then we can always come back. So let's go, let's continue on uh, to the section 2A since we're going to keep programs in for now. So beyond the next section of red into yellow where it says add to integrated community supports. Yes, and this is language that uh, really is meant to elevate what young people bring um, and it, it's it's very it's very specific. I it, I know it's a lot of uh, additional language, but it it um, it the bill um, uh, the hope is that we're we're really seeing community schools through this lens of um, you know what young people bring, um, what the capacity of students and families offer their schools. And um, so that we're, we're moving from, um, we're moving not from, but we're, we're adding to the, the, the concept of 
of services to the con you know the the full service model to the concept of really bringing in the um the the value and um again assets that that our our students our youth our children bring and their families and community what is universal design for learning um yeah, that that's um that is a particular I mean, you know that that's a really good question. That is a particular approach to um, to curriculum that that allows for um, different different ways of learning. Um, make sure that students with or, or young people who with different um, learning ability. Um, are, are kind of included in, and, and there's a focus there on particularly on um, like linguistic, it says cultural and linguistic diversity. Um, but the universal design part is really to make sure that all kids, uh, all students have, um, you know, access to, to the learning, the teaching and learning that's going on. Dr. Boucher, uh... Is this something that's recognized? Uh, and is this something that you'd be comfortable with? It's a, yeah. it feels like policy language and we don't wanna make any decisions without consulting you. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And if I may, there, there's nothing about Ms. Finn's suggestions that is worrisome to us. Okay. Um, I have a hard stop at three, so. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're just going to, we're just hitting the highlights here. We'll, uh, I think the only spot where we're gonna be returning are the issues around some questions about whether or not the word programs or education are gonna be used, but we'll just uh, continue. Uh, we'll, we'll, let's continue with Ms. Finn and wrap this up and then we're going to move to you. But it sounds like, again, everything here, nothing is, is concerning to you that's being proposed. Okay, great. No, no, Mr. Chair, could I actually add a piece though to what Senator Hooker and Ms. Finn have said about the systems piece? Please. We, we would actually support that as well because one of the um, pieces of, of this bill and I think of, of a sole focus even on schools per se is that it's a bit out of step with a frame around a district approach and many of our inequities are actually across schools within a district. And so we want to find that sweet spot if we're moving forward with this where you're also holding that district accountable for making sure that all schools in its district have what is needed for an equitable education. And so I think that's how you get at this because um, when you talk about a system of community schools, it allows for that flexibility to be able to be thinking about your full sort of group of schools at a district level or even in a region. And many of the supports and resources um, that Ms. Finn had talked about, we would want those to be actually negotiated um, from the agency of education's perspective at a district level with attention toward those schools that need it the most. But um, that district piece, I mean, if, if if we aren't really taking that kind of lens, I worry that we're out of step with Act 46, for instance, where we've been really trying to push into a more systemic kind of education system. And I think that there's a way to do it here. Um, and I might be using slightly different language than what Senator Hooker and Ms. Finn have said, but I think that we're in agreement with, with um, not so much about the the word program or not for us. It's more mm -hmm. just about that lens that um, schools are very important, but you need to think about like a system of schools and you need to think, right? Because you wouldn't want, for instance, just and then I'll be quiet, but you wouldn't want, for instance, an amazing um, K-3 community school. And then the student is going off to a middle school that is is really, terrible and is, and is antithetical to what was going on in a community school. Does that make sense? It does. So uh, where, what language would you uh, like? <laughs> yeah. um, I think, I think just 
instead of program, you could put um, system. Yeah. Or even like a system of community schools or, or something like that. Okay. Um, I think it's actually, I think it's already, it's baked into the logistics in some sense because the districts are who has to actually apply for the money. But I do think it warrants, um, you know, just some tweaking of language. And I can take a look at it over the weekend. And if I see any places that are quick fixes, I can get that back to you. For the record, we're still not in full support because of the timing, but I'm realizing that this is- No, a, I understand that, yeah. This and is I, a train we're not, we've lost and it's moving forward. So no, now that's, something, to... that's something, you know, we're gonna continue to, to have a conversation with you on. Yeah. Um, and I do need to just interrupt for one moment, Senator Perchlick, uh, great news. Uh, Senate Appropriations would like to see you uh, on H426, if you don't mind. I'm gonna send you a Zoom link right now um, if you don't mind, uh, is that okay right now? Is that yeah, okay? That's fine. Okay. It's, um, you're emailing it to me or what? I'm emailing it to you. It's on its way. The zoom link. If you don't mind, right, Thanks. You really, really appreciate it. Um, okay. So, uh, so Jim, are you taking some of this down? I think we're, we're getting somewhere. I, I think we're, we'll end up uh, in a good spot. Uh, additional language makes it more inclusive, more broad, gets at systems. Uh, all feels good to me. Ms. Finn, uh, do you wanna keep, uh, keep plugging along here with us for another five minutes and then we're gonna shift to the uh, deputy secretary. Absolutely. Um I think C on um, page six C is just, again, it's adding language that's it's very specific about, um, you know, add, making sure that all students and their families feel a sense of belonging. And, and it, it's actually bringing us back to or, or leading to the, the, um, the, the fifth pillar that we're proposing. Um, and then on D, um, add to collaborative leadership and practices and integrated school and community leadership team that would include youth and family representatives. I think it's, it's uh, you know, it's described in more detail. I realize it's described in more detail in the um, site-based leadership team. Um, and this, we put this in before that change, but I, I would highlight the youth part because that the uh, students and youth are not haven't been listed in the that that um, site-based leadership team, and we think that they that they should be um, mem you know members that they should be included and and their voice is elevated. And Thank then, you. okay, and then E on the next is pages that is this fifth pillar, if you will, safe, inclusive, and equitable learning environments. That sounds good. Absolutely. Okay. Um, oh, here's the here it is on page seven five. Site based leadership team add students. That so that's really what we're um, suggesting there. So and, just so I I'm clear um, on page seven. Add students to uh, I the site based leadership team. It lists. Ah yes, that's fine. Got it, thank you. And then, um, so this, this, I will say that, as I said earlier, I'm not exactly sure how this would work. So, you know, we, we're we really thinking about if, if we wanna talk about, we wanna think about this and, and through an equity framework, um, if the AOE is um, determining, I think with, now it, it was with the secretary uh, agency of sec secretary of the agency of human services, but now the trauma um, staff. But that that they use an equity uh, an equity lens, and again the AOE has this, um, and there are others, but uh, AOE has this great equity lens tool, and um, it it would help. I uh, you know we think it would help because it would give the framework for what the community, you know, what the um, 
the school districts or the community and school districts are uh, are um, aiming for right in 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 this approach in 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 trying to get a community school um, up and running, right. and so that that's our recommendation. I'm not sure how how that works with the ALE, uh, you know, and their their process. Dr. Boucher, how do you feel about that? It's actually, as I think I shared before, um, the process that we use um, so it's in okay. everything that we do, but I don't think it hurts to actually put, um, okay. put that in there. I don't know, I think the committee would need to um, discern whether you want um, the equity tool to be used in making decisions about the grants or if you want it to be, um, you know, you could get, I guess what I would say is you could get around it by saying that that needs to be something that's addressed in the applications and then the agency needs to um, use the equity tool in addition to um, conferring with, and if I might, if I may, I would actually, um, clean that language up a little and say, uh, I would say agency of education or secretary, that's interchangeable as um, Mr. Damari knows, but I would actually have the consulting be with um, either the department of mental health or the commissioner of mental health, including the trauma person, because the way it reads right now, it almost like precludes other people from mental health being part of that. So. Okay. That's okay. like tiny, that's tiny, but like, I think it does, it just, it just will help for logistics and clarification. So I think um, we agree, we agree with um, an equity lens. Um, that's kind of what we do with all of our grants um, now. So um, we're happy to, you know, put that in. Okay. Um, and we'll, we'll, you know, again, with all these additions, uh, most of which I think sound more than fine, um, and the more I read into them, some of them will shift this, I think, and, and make, make things stronger um, and clearer and more comprehensive. So, so thank you, Ms. Finn. I think what we'll end up doing is, uh, Jim, you have enough to go on right now. There really aren't, you know, we could, I'm not going to, you know, draw a line in the sand over programs and things like that, but let's keep them in there for now, programs and the word education. Um, and then we can look at them again in a new copy when we, we come back to this on um, as a committee on Tuesday. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Ben, I appreciate it. Uh, committee, so we have uh, Secretary uh, Boucher with us for uh, another 20 minutes. Um, senators have hopefully had an opportunity to just review again H106, the community school spill. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has questions, but I'll kick it off if you don't mind, uh, Dr. Boucher. Um, a couple of things that you've raised, I just wanna go back to so that we can have the best information and uh, before we make some decisions. You know, one of them is the question of the funding. You know, you've pointed out as has the chair of uh, uh, House said a few times in other conversations, all these schools, and we all know schools are getting a lot of money. Uh, schools are, um, you know, and, and our literacy bill right now is talking about, uh, or has a big component helping schools use money toward literacy. And so in that kind of spirit, I, I just wanna talk through a little bit more the two options that we're being presented here with. One is, you know, using this ESSER set aside fund to grant things out. Another option would be uh, to somehow, <clears throat> again, have the agency identify those schools that need these services the most and, um, or these programs the most and sort of work with them to create these programs given the extra, given, given the amount of money that they've received. So, um, if you want to just say say something about that, that'd be great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And by the way, I am very sorry that I have the hard stop at three. I'm really oh, sorry that our, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's someone, it's a DC person we got to talk to. So I apologize. Um, no problem. Our schedules no problem. have not clicked. 
Um, I think it's a great question. So, um, I, I, so I think it, it again has to do um, with the timing, but then um, your question raised another question for me. So here's, here's what I think will happen as it is now. So, so right now the eligibility criteria are, are very broad. Um, so for instance, I think the eligibility criterion one is 40% or more free and reduced lunch. And I just want to um, remind, remind or, or, um, or educate um, the committee if, if folks don't already know that the average um, student level, so it's a little bit different, but it's pretty much this, you know, it's, it's, it's in the ballpark of, of student level FRL um, eligibility is 38 to 40%. So right there, you've basically said, who is eligible is, you know, half of our um, schools. And then you've said um, uh, eligibility criterion two is comprehensive or equity supports. So comprehensive supports, I think works if we're talking, if what the committee would like is a more targeted um, outreach to schools, because those are the bottom 5%, if you will, in terms of our SS state plan. So in terms of um, academic achievement and the rest of our quality, education quality standards. Equity though, identification for equity supports is a, is a very big list as well of our schools because we're not doing a great job as we all know around um, issues of equity with our historically marginalized students, which is why we're having a lot of these conversations. So, and I think the reason I'm getting into the, some of these details is because I think that really gets at your question, Mr. Chair, which is what is the best approach to take? So right now, if it's, if it's a grant program um, that these eligible schools can apply for, um, it's kind of going to probably look like, um, like our grant programs usually look. And so, you know, there are a lot of entities that will be able to apply for it and we will be, you know, we, we will have to follow what is um, stipulated in the statute about how to actually select those schools, those districts on behalf of schools. Another option would be we actually use those eligibility criteria and there I would actually recommend that those get tightened up to actually um, come up with a smaller subset of schools, districts and schools. And we could do outreach to them to say, here's this community school initiative. There you go, initiative instead of program. Mm -hmm. um, here's what community schools are. Um, you know, here are the supports you can have. Um, you know, we're, we're ready to work with you on that. But then again, for me, that's the real timing piece because I don't think we're gonna be ready to do as an agency, I don't think we're gonna be ready to do that until next session. So it really is, I know I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like talking about all of these different concerns, but they're all interrelated. Mm -hmm. So um, the other piece I would say, just while I have the floor, even though I'm kind of, I'm, I'm giving you everything all at once is, I think the needs assessment as it's actually talked about in the bill is right. It is the correct level of needs assessment that you would need to, to, to be successful at a community schools initiative. I, I really, really am concerned. Um, I, I just don't think that districts will be able to pull that needs assessment off in time for September 21, even if they're using um, their recovery planning, which if I were in their shoes, that's what I would do. But that again, had a really different lens, right? It was really on those three different recovery areas, which is related to what they would need in the needs assessment. So I think that's something to think through. And then the other piece I would say is that um, one of the challenges that we're facing, and I'm really glad that um, Senator Lyons just popped on, is that the community school initiatives, they're only going to work if we, can, if we actually have the services available to actually like bring them together and coordinate them. And so um, 
I just worry that we are putting a lot of stock in a community schools initiative and at the end of the day, what we really need to be doing with state dollars is to actually build up that infrastructure and make sure that there are mental health services available, that there are trauma informed um, practices that um, districts have access to. So again, you know, in a nutshell, it's still about the timing for us, yeah. but I, I do, I do see, and I want to honor that I see the committee has listened and, you know, has taken seriously some of the things that we've brought forth. And I really appreciate that. And I just want to say that, um, you know, I, I just don't know how many, um, I don't know how many, I'm not getting a strong sense from the field that there are many that would take this opportunity this coming um, summer. I know, I think I think uh, Superintendent Castle would, and I think um, I've spoken with him actually. Um, so I think he actually would be very interested in it. Um, and maybe that's okay. Maybe that's, you know, maybe that's okay. Is there, you know, I, you know, I, I want this to go, you know, if, Move this. I want it to be a success. I want it to not be messy, if you will. I know everybody has a lot on their plates right now. And, you know, so I'm hearing from some that, gosh, this is to have, this needs to have three years. We've got to get the three year thing going because if not, it's, it's not going to fly, you know, the three years of funding. But uh, is there sort of a, and also I completely respect the agency has a lot of stuff going on. Um, schools have a lot of things going on. This, we want to have help them. We don't want it to be, you know, in, in some ways, um, you know, we don't, we don't want just two schools to apply. I mean, we can arrange it so that, you know, uh, the two schools that are interested can move forward without even this going forward right now. But is there a happy medium in, in this, Dr. Boucher? In other words, could we say that these assessments are due? Uh, because I, I tend to, you know, ha I share your concern here. You know, September is right around the corner. Uh, schools, some are just transitioning back, you know, all these things. Um, could we say that they're due in January? You know, does that make a difference in, in any way where say they're due in January until instead of the following September, it just gives an extra, teachers are back, people are having meetings, people have an opportunity to sort of see what is in action in their schools and kind of go from there. I, I don't know. Can I, can I jump okay. in and clarify a few points? Yeah, please. Yeah, first of all, um, um, it's not a grant program as written. Uh, so there's right, no right, application right. Not a grant program. Yeah. Um, basically the agency is empowered to make determinations of yeah. how the funds are used. Second, the needs assessment isn't by September 1. It's what? It's, the needs, needs assessment is not due by September 1. It's the first year of grant funding is used to do the grant, the needs assessment. So you have the whole year under this language to right. do the needs assessment. I think that right. needs to Thank be- you for that. Um, I think that needs to be clarified because my understanding when I read this was similar to Mr. Uh, to Senator Campion's. So, um, because one of the suggestions I was going to have was to actually really call out that the first year is for planning. I mean, that would really get at this issue. Um, and um, we we do so. So I think the distinction might be whether this is um, a grant competition versus a grant like we have to actually give them a grant to give them the dollars so there's a little bit of um you know we can't just give them a check <laughs> like that's not how state dollars work so so we do have to award them a grant i think perhaps uh, mr damaray what you're talking about is it's not set up right now to be a competitive grant program um that there, there would be selected schools, although I think that that's not clear in terms of how it's written right now, that there would be um, a particular subset of schools that would automatically qualify for these funds. I, and as I just said um, in my testimony, the way the eligibility criteria um, are set right now, that would, it would basically be, you know, probably 75% of districts and schools, which there's not enough for them to all have $110 million by three years, even if we took the entire set aside. <laughs> can, I just, can I just mention that, that the, um, 
eligibility is, is wide, that's true. Um, but there was language added in the last draft about how the agency is to select the recipient. Uh, and that's on page eight of the, of the bill. And I'll just read it, it's a sentence. It says, in determining which eligible recipients shall receive funding, the secretary shall take into account relative need based on the extent to which community school program services are needed and the extent to which the eligible recipient seeks to offer them. So it's not, there's some, some other criteria here as well. Uh, in the so, so that is for us hugely broad and, and we would need to have some indication from the committee about like, how does the committee define need? Like, like what, it, I don't, I'm not talking specifically just at a, a conceptual level. So for instance, as an example, would need be um, uh, proposals or um, schools that are, doc that are documenting that they have um, a significant need for trauma-informed practices. And, and that's why they're looking for um, a community schools um, adventure. <laughs> um, would it be, would need be based on um, population demographics or, you know, just to throw this out as one example, you know, um, emergency, I mean, it's such, it's right in the news right now, right? But like um, um, waiting lists in emergency rooms for getting youth um, mental health services, would it be based on, um, you know, uh, proportion of population that is not getting dental care. I mean, like it's it's so huge that we would need some, um, I would request that we have guidance then from the General Assembly on like, what are the parameters around need that the committee wants us to use? Does that make sense? Because just to say yeah. need is so yeah. broad. Um, and I guess I was thinking that an easier way to do that would be to restrict the eligibility criteria from the get-go. And then just not, and then just do kind of like, here's the money. Yes, you have to apply because you have to say what you're gonna do with the money and you need to have a report due um, at the end of the granting period, but it's not really, it's not really a review. We have many grants like that where there isn't like, there's not a review. It's not a competition, in other words. Does that, I hope this is making sense to folks. It is, it is. Uh, it's um, maybe one of the things that would be helpful, Jim, just to review for the committee. If the bill were to go into effect as written right now, you would just take us through what schools would have to do the first year, the second year, and third year. Um, okay. In that in that interaction with the with AOE. Yeah. Mm. So what the bill says is, is that the first year of funding should be used to conduct the needs and asset assessment of the school to determine what is necessary to develop a community school program and, and an action plan to implement. During the second and third years of funding, um, then it will be the implementation phase. So first year is the needs, needs and asset assessment. Second two years is implementation of an action plan based on that. So, so the school would have, let's say, between September, in a school that the agency has identified as needing this uh, or really warranting these kinds of services, that would be identified you know, sometime in the summer and then schools in that first year, let's say September to July, September to June, they would be identifying, that's when they would be there doing their planning and things like that. Yeah, if you don't have a coordinator, you, you hire one. Yeah. Elevate one from staff. Yeah. And then the first task would be to do that needs and asset assessment. Okay. Okay. Somehow Thank I missed that, so thanks, Jim. Yeah, no, no, and I, I appreciate that. It's like still great. operating on an, I don't know. Let's all be honest player. here. I mean, there've been a lot of things going back and forth. We've been on the floor, you know, we just, you know, passing a number of different bills, things are changing. And so that review is, is very helpful. Yeah, I simplified that because it, 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 the bill says too, if you've done a needs assessment within the last three years, mm -hmm. 
uh, that basically meets the same criteria, you have to do it again. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So really, if, if in, in just the last couple of minutes, Dr. Boucher, the big lift for the agency would be identifying the schools that need, I mean, if, if, it had, if we had kept it as a grant process, going through grants or going through proposals, all those kinds of things, but sort of shifting it where you're identifying the schools that need it the most, this is, that, that's where the, and I'm not saying it's not, but that's where the, the big lift is for the agency. But it's not a big lift. I mean, if, if the, and again, I'm gonna go back to the, so, so it would be a big lift right now. Yeah. Because, because basically, you know, with, with minimal hyperbole, every school is probably going to be able to be eligible yeah, for yeah, this. Yeah. And so, yeah. so then it kind of becomes, okay, so, so then we have to craft some way to select them. And that's kind of where I was saying, like, we need some guidance on that. Yeah. Um, so if we can actually, um, or, or if the committee can actually maybe take a minute to think about who do you want to yeah. get these funds, um, and, and think about the eligibility criteria that way, I think that would be a much um, more palatable lift for us. All right, that sounds great. That sounds like that would leave us in a good spot. So for Tuesday, and I know there are people watching this who are really dedicated to this bill, uh, I can work with folks over the weekend and bring it to the committee on Tuesday and say, hey, here's some, here, it, this would tighten the criteria that we would give to the agency. So as Dr. Boucher is saying, you know, instead of looking at all of the schools, or half of the schools in the state, basically, we could narrow it down, and that would, um, I mean, just make sense on, on, on a lot of different levels. And I think that, that's a great spot to leave this. Uh, Mr. Demaret. Just to clarify before uh, Mr. Chair leaves, um, I think you mentioned that you get a lot more schools uh, when you include equity supports. So if we took it to be, um, the schools with the 40% more uh, poverty and comprehensive supports, would that be narrow enough? If it was and, absolutely, because then it would probably be pretty, not solely, but pretty mutually exclusive. So I didn't bring that up because I, I do really, um, I do really want to honor um, the equity work that needs to be done in our state. And you certainly just heard that from Ms. Finn. Yeah. So logistically, Yes, if you remove that as a criterion, it would it would um, absolutely shrink that pool. I still though think that setting the free and reduced lunch um, at the average, about the average free and reduced lunch percentage is 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 it is not the way to go. <laughs> I th I think you can actually you know say something. I mean, for instance, comprehensive is the is the five percent? I'm not sure you would want to actually like completely make um, the the top five percent um, um, proportions of free free and reduced lunch in the state because that might be too restrictive. But you could say like the top quarter. Uh huh. Something like that. Yeah, and uh -huh. then you could play around with the and and or for those eligibility. Yeah. Um, you know that that second eligibility criteria is five percent. It's it's the bottom five percent in terms of performance four schools and then the FRL you could think about and then think about like whether you want those both to be criteria or just one. Okay, so, but this sounds great. This sounds like we're in a good spot. Uh, Mr. Demaray and I can talk. Uh, we'll also connect with people over the weekend if the committee feels uh, good with that and we'll bring back some language that will hopefully tighten this up. Um, and uh, I think we'll put everybody in, in a, Good place to move forward. Dr. Boucher, thank you very much for coming uh, in. Good luck uh, in your next meetings, and we will look forward to sharing this language with you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Is it the weekend yet? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I know you're probably all feeling the same. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks, you too. Okay, committee, this feels uh, really much better. I feel like if we can uh, work to tighten up some, of, first of all, I think uh, Ms. Finn's language was great, uh, very solid, really, really helps advance the bill. We'll tighten up the language around eligibility so that the agency can, 
can really get their their heads and hands around who uh, most needs this uh, in our state, these kinds of services. Um, and I think that's that's a win-win. And then Senator Perslick, uh, I would still like your witness, if you'd be so kind to uh, come in on Tuesday, probably to weigh in on on this next draft of a bill. Please go ahead. Yes. So I wondered if I could ask the question that yeah. that group because they do this work. They're working with some schools to do kind of community school programs. For using that word, and so can I ask that question now, or are you? Yeah, please go for it. So, and I did get an email to Jim about it, but I guess this is a question to Jim or just to the committee. So this is on this is where where it says that they have to hire the purpose uses of funds. It's on page ten. So where it says hire a coordinator, I guess it's, yeah B lines twelve through whatever seventeen. So at the end of that it says augment work already being performed to develop and implement a community school program. So that's the kind of work that they're already doing. So their question was, would a school be able to apply for a grant to do that work? Or is the way this language is written, this is work that the coordinator would do, not the school. So basically, is that last part of that, this B is all one sentence, I think. So at the end of that sentence where it says, augment work already being performed is that being augmented by the coordinator or by the school and is my question clear jim well your question is clear the language is broad it doesn't limit it to being done by the school or just by the coordinator it's just the augment work being done um and augments a very broad word so um i'm not sure if that answers your question but so how i would read it so the other stuff in here isn't stuff that the coordinator does because it says hire community coordinator, develop, then develop and implement a community school program. That's just what the school's doing and the, the coordinators is part of that. But I just, I wanted to make sure that it's not the intent of whoever came up with this language wasn't that the, the coordinator in collaboration with the leadership team is developing and implementing the program. Which I guess now that I say it out loud, probably nobody thought that. That it's really the whole school doing it, not the court, not the school coordinator. But the coordinator is is the coordinator is there to coordinate, right? So that coordinating the implementation, but involved, uh, I would imagine large parts of school staff to implement a program like like this. Senator Persick, are you concerned that? not everybody that it, the process may in some way not be as inclusive or yeah the, the concern was like some people some schools are already doing this kind of work they haven't hired a coordinator and i guess i guess i don't know if they care if they hire a coordinator or not but i guess they wouldn't want to want to they they're doing this work kind of as nonprofits, consulting to the school almost okay and they, they're wondering is it now only the coordinator can do that work or could the school still you know team up with these nonprofits that are su supporting them and use the grant money to do that oh i see okay that's a great question so you a, think, yeah. yeah okay go ahead jim i i didn't appreciate that angle of your question so i, I appreciate the explanation um so this language just say you have to hire one um or designate one from so it doesn't contemplate having a consultant doing this work. It, it, it envisions it being embedded in the school as, as an employee. Right. So like when it says anything that's in collaboration with this site-based leadership team, that's not the school, that's the coordinator. And so that means mm -hmm. the yeah, hey, we're augmenting work already being performed. Yeah, yeah, for example, we're, we're working in collaboration with the SFA leadership team. Correct. Yeah. Senator Persley, are you? Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, maybe. Sorry. No, you go first, please. Maybe it's broad enough to where, because it's this whole section is what the school uses the funds for. So I'm sure as long as they hire a coordinator, if they had other money, to work with, you know, others. 
uh, I'm just, the way I read it, that they could use, the school could use that money. They still have to hire a coordinator, but with the coordinator and the state site-based leadership team, if they wanted to work with uh, a nonprofit that helps schools. Yeah, nothing that precludes that in this bill. Yeah. Yeah, and the other that thing that's- or just so you know, Senator Persil, I don't know if you have a bad connection, but you're pausing periodic, you're freezing periodically. Uh, so Jim said it doesn't, uh, nothing precludes that from happening in this bill. Did you hear that part? But what I'm interested in is, for example, you know, the agency a lot of times will contract things out. Are you looking, Senator Perslick, for a nonprofit, for a school to be able to just basically maybe not hire a non uh, coordinator because it doesn't work for them and work in another way through another organization? Or do you wanna, or are you not trying to alter the coordinator role and hire? I think hiring a coordinator makes sense. I don't, okay. I don't know what others might think, but you know, it, it seems okay. like we are testimony pretty clear that a, that a coordinator right. is kind of essential. Right. I guess it, could they augment what the coordinator yeah. is doing? And and if, and if there's a and maybe when when we hear from them on Tuesday, we'll hear if they do have a different opinion. But I'm I'm not sure. On that. Yes, I am unstable today. Okay, you're not, but your internet is. Um. Okay. I think we've, we're, we're getting somewhere. I think by Tuesday, uh, we'll have some additional language to tighten this up um, and uh, uh, hopefully be able to advance it on Wednesday. Um, Senator Perchlick, before we take a quick five minute break, do you want to tell us about your visit to a probes? Yeah, they had a lot of questions. I wasn't really ready for the details of the bill. I couldn't remember it, even though I had the this that is long School uh, school construction, okay. H four to six. They voted it out. Seven zeros or seven in there. So they they were and they're going to take our amendment and swap out that section at, with our language. Um, they had a lot of questions about the inventory and the assessment and when they were being done and who was doing them and how much they cost and what exactly was included and. When I and when I came in, they had a question. They had a whole discussion about radon. Uh huh. Um, they didn't ask me about that, but they, you know, they had a lot of questions. But in the end, I just said you can read the language. But <laughs> but they passed it out. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, and I do believe we may be seeing an amendment on uh, radon uh, next week. Um, uh, so I don't know if you, if Senator Pearson has been in contact with you. Uh, so we may be seeing that, which would be good to advance. Okay, committee, let's just, co let's come back at 315 and uh, go through S16 and uh, possibly wrap after that.